Hello, people. Welcome to the Fantasy Fair. The what is it? Oh, that is right. The most magical podcast on earth. Joining me, I have the lonesome Alexis with uh, Alexis Soto. <laughs> We're over here. I'm doing great. Where did that come from? I don't know. It was on my mind. <laughs> the Lonesome Cowboy by Chris Stapleton on the yeah. Toy Story 4 soundtrack. If, you, so if you're in the to know, it. you're in the know. If you don't, well... If you're in the know, and I'm just I'm just doing it for my personal sake, not for yours. Uh, or or audiences who are like, oh, what's that, you know? I, I don't know. Um, We're going to go, if you can't tell, we're going to have a loosey-goosey talk about things and stuff and just a little nice little catch-up episode because i feel like we haven't done a catch-up episode in a while just to you know check in see how we're doing what's going on during this crazy world um and all that good shit so welcome to the fantasy fair we'll see where the conversation go well for sure we're going to talk about clone wars a little later but that's the only thing that's like like for sure but the rest is just going to be up and up and going. Um, I want to start off the podcast and ask you, did you watch the the Disney uh, family sing along on ABC or the clips of it for that matter? <laughs> OK, no. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for, I, I to be honest with you, uh, I forget it even exists. OK. It was nice. Can you tell me what was... Okay, so tell me what was... Um, what did people sing along to? Okay, so what it was, was, a, it, was a, it was a bunch of celebrities, but not in the Gal Gadot cringy Imagine video kind of sense. Um, it's just celebrities and they just want to sing Disney songs. And I that, that to me, that's where it goes. Um, the... I, I thought it was going to be like, I mean, you, you couldn't go wrong because the Gal Gadot uh, uh, Imagine video was so cringe and everything like that, that I was just like, okay, celebrities don't need to, you know, sing to us while, you know, this this thing is going on um, about like unification while they sit comfortably in their mansions and all that stuff. So I was like, okay, you don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm over it. But then, you know, just like Disney songs, I watch, you know, famous people and artists and all that stuff sing Disney covers all the time. So this is nothing out of the norm for me. Um, what it was, was a, it was a show that had um, celebrities, guest stars, um, and artists and singers and all that stuff. And they go come in and they sing Disney hits. Um, you had Darren Chris, he did I Want to Be Like You. Um, Ariana Grande did a cover of um, I Won't Say I'm In Love, which was really good. Um, uh, Josh Gad did Luke Evans and Alan Menken. They did um, Gaston. And if you're wondering how they were able to do this, uh, well, it, Zoom is a thing now and people are like doing filming their own little segments for this uh for this show and it was really good um there was even a high school musical reunion segment introduced by zach afron which was i think big because um and what else was there christina aguilera she's saying uh can you feel the love tonight um which is a nice change of pace because uh, you would think that she would go for the no-brainer song, but it's a nice change of pace of what what she went through, um, and that's pretty much it. Like in terms of, like the the intriguing thing. Oh, Beyonce came out and said a couple of words, like saying, "Oh, we're we're we got this, guys," and all that stuff. And I'm like, ah, you know, no. If you're a Beyonce fan, I'm sorry. I just I I I I, I, I can't stand her. <laughs> um. But, um, yeah, it was nice. It was really nice. Um, I'm surprised, you know, cause I know you like Disney music and covers like, like I do. Um, and so I, I was surprised that you didn't, uh, catch a little bit unless you were going to cringe at the whole thing. Cause I, cause I know that you've become, uh, 
I'm trying to think of a better word than disenfranchised with Disney. <laughs> um, it's not so much Disney. It's just that whole kind of... I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't see it because I forgot it existed in the first place. And then even if it was there, I kind of wouldn't go out of my way to see it. I've been doing other things to keep me entertained. But like, if it's on Disney+, Plus, um, if, it, if it gets dropped on Disney+, Plus, like I'll watch it. Like I watched the Coco concert movie from the Hollywood Bowl um, over I, the weekend. I thought that was very good. You can watch the clips on YouTube. ABC officially released all the, all the songs. And it's not something I'm going to go out of my way to go see. Like, if it's in front of me, I'll watch it. But, like, I'm not going to, like, spend two seconds thinking about it. Unless, like, I see, like, if it's, like, right in front of my fingertips, then I'll go. But I'm not... It's whatever. But I, 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 a lot of the people that you do, you did mention, I am big fans of, and so they sound like great covers. Oh, Tori Kelly, she did a Colors of the Wind, and it was nice. Like there's just, it was just an embarrassment of like people singing and, and all this stuff. It was good. It was really good stuff. Um, I, 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 I lament. I'm gonna be lamenting for the next couple of days because we were planning something big next week it's so it's it's (laughs) it's so sad that i've come to the point where i literally forget we even planned a trip (laughs) that's how that's how bad things have gotten like what you just said right now i was like oh yeah i just completely blocked it out because it just hurts too much to think about because like you know ever since the first time you me and alexis uh, Moreno ever did a podcast together five years ago on Red Spotlights. Diamonds are forever. Go check it out. It's on the feed. Um, you go, you go and listen to that episode, and you think that we've been friends for years. Um, that's how much like each of us had been instilled with Disney in our childhoods, right? Uh-huh. And so to think that five years of being like just such close friends that finally we had the opportunity to like be able to you know support ourselves and then go and and have an actual trip at disneyland like we were talking about a three-day stay all these wonderful things that we would have the time to do like i've never been able to have three entire days at disney and like to do that with your friends like especially us like that's like something we had dreamed of like ever since we met and it was so close. It's like that that, that song from Enchanted. So, so close, close and so far oh, away. Oh, <laughs> That's literally what it you know, is. It's and so... it sucks even more, Kyle, because like I don't even know when. I don't even know don't when know. and if they'll. I don't know when. I don't know when. I don't, I don't know, know how. how. <laughs> but something's not starting right now. <laughs> it's just like. I don't even know if there even is going to be an opportunity in the near future to go again. Like it's not something that got canceled and we can reschedule later in the year. It's to, it's gotten to such a bad state where we don't even know if 2021 is even on the table anymore in terms of like, because... not, I'm not saying the parks won't be open. I'm saying like, if we're going to be in the same like position to go again, the expense and the scheduling is just hard already. Yeah. Um, the, okay, the thing, the ridiculous thing about this whole thing is, is that you know we were, you know, we did, we planned, we, we had, we're financially stable to, <laughs> to go. Um, well, the, we could afford it. We could afford yeah, it for a change, you know. <laughs> um, for the first time in forever, you know. Um, cue the song. Uh, I think that it it is such a tragic. I mean, people are looking at like fall of twenty twenty one for concerts. To become a thing again, um, it was just an officially announced. I mean, we always we we already speculated it, Peter, um, that uh, that Comic Con was uh, was gonna come to a close, and lo and behold, it was officially announced uh, that it was uh, that it was closed, um, and that's crazy. Cause... I think I read it was the first time in like decades that Comic Con's been canceled. Yeah, fifty years. Wow, it's been fifty years since they canceled uh, Comic Con, and they they just it keeps on doing, you know. And all, to be honest, though, it's like 
what is there to look forward to if you were to watch a panel at Comic Con and all this stuff? I mean, there's like nothing in the pipeline coming out in the near future or anything like that. Like November, you know, everybody's just like moving everything to November. Uh, what was supposed to come out in the summer, and what's supposed to come out in the summer is supposed to come out in the spring. I mean, the, the... can we talk about can we talk about the movies that supposedly are going to come out in November? Cause that's insane. Have you seen the lineup? Yeah, Soul, uh, Black Widow, um, Raya. Uh, no, 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 no. Raya, Raya's Raya, been pushed. Raya, Raya's, oh yeah, Raya's been pushed to March instead of November. It was supposed to be released in November, and it was being pushed to March. Um, I, I, God, God damn, like that's not all of them though, dude. You forgot about James Bond, James and Bond, you forgot yeah. about Kong versus Godzilla. Well, I was speaking specifically of Disney, but yeah, uh, Kong and Bond has been moved and everything like that. Um, well, it's you gotta wonder though, and even then, it's kind of an uncertainty think... at this point. No, well, Mulan is still holding on to a July release date, which. <sighs> I think Black Widow and Soul are going to come out on November. I just think, you know, the movie fan and all of us really wants to, like, all those big movies, they can't possibly all come out in November because that is, I mean, those are all summer movies, basically, that That's... are not going to be in November. But again, okay, here's the thing, though. If they do open up, like, let's say October or something like that, the movie theaters, um if amc is still around um because it's you know close to if not already filed for bank uh bankruptcy um which is crazy just like a month of no film uh going could automatically declare somebody like some company like that but if they do um you are looking at something like people are clearly bored out of their minds people are uh, are looking for that itch to come back to normalcy you know and honestly if they do like if november is like the the startup day of the theaters you could definitely see people participating in all of the movies that came out that come out that month i don't know about you although to be to be fair the, 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 i mean i would certainly like that to be the case I would certainly like for when this is all said and done that people can go rush out and enjoy themselves. And, you know, I think those of us who have, it's been, I think, officially, we're about, we're about to approach, if not cross a single month, a whole month of just being, you know, staying at home and everything, you know, to, you know, bend the curve and everything. Um, it, I hope, I hope what you're saying is true, but we have to consider a couple of different things. The prevailing theory is that let's just say in August, um, we're, we're slowly beginning to like go back to normal life. The prevailing theory among everyone in the industry suspects that people will be too scared to go back to movie theaters because that, you know, is a big home base for a lot of crowds. Um, and if that's the case, that's going to uh -huh. cost, uh, the movie theaters will be better than not being open, but it is going to result in less money for everyone as a result of that. I I don't I, for me I don't care. I'm gonna go in a hazmat suit and go see uh, No Time to Die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't care if it kills me. <laughs> well, it's like we might see as part of our you know when we go back to normal life. Uh, in addition that we have to my, may may get accustomed to is just being out in public with masks on. That might just be a, a normal thing from now on, you know, at least for the next year or so. Flip it for concessions. <laughs> just like and flip the flap. <laughs> there's another, there's one other aspect that's, that's, um, that's unfortunate. And that is, <sighs> will people even have the funds to go and spend yeah, cause on a movie. Because we're looking at a deep recession right now. Bad yeah. recession. A really bad recession, yeah. Yeah, where this is... Uh, it was funny. Go ahead, Kyle. You know, it's so funny. We're like... We're... 
it, it's kind of like serendipitous. It's kind of like history repeating itself, really. Because if you look back in history, it's so crazy. The 20s is when everything started to plummet. Oh, God, the don't ni- say that. That the, uh, the 1920s yeah. is when, you know, the the American economy plummeted, you know, due to a Great Depression in the 30s. I think we're looking at that right now. I, I you know... <laughs> Time could prove me wrong, but I'm seriously thinking that that's what's happening. I think, I, I mean, I, I, not to sound like a conspiracy theorist and anything like that, but I think the 1900s is doomed to repeat itself um, in the in the new millennia, and I think that what we're gonna see is I think uh, another another. Uh, I would I wouldn't call it a world war, but where, uh, if time, time is as predictable as we know it to be, it it might happen in the thirties. I mean, it's just like so many different things, so many different things, um, and it's kind of scary, and it's kind of, and it's absolutely absurd. Um, but back to back to lighter, lighter uh, uh topics. Uh, I do hope people like go out and you know have have a movie going experience again because like honestly like that's one of the the most american things you know you could do is you know go see a movie you know that's like one of the like you know the one of america's passing times other than baseball you know movies is has always been in the conversation of everything and i i think that it, it it'll be a time where people need movies um i could be completely wrong and people like still are paranoid and freaked out all that stuff unless you're florida of course and um <laughs> reopen don't don't get me started on that oh my god i'm so pissed off i am literally so pissed off it's like people are not going to be happy. People are literally not going to be happy until they're the direct result of somebody else dying. That's how bad things have gotten. Like, what the fuck? There was a headline today that said, people cheer as beaches open, reopen in Florida. And I'm like, good. I hope you guys are happy when you're the direct result of somebody else dying. Fuck off. Um... Yeah, it's like I'm sorry. It's like the I mean, you just oh, God. He's saying, people the stay in your damn homes, open. people. <laughs> the the more you're in your house, the faster this thing will pass. But the thing is, is that people aren't staying in their houses. People want to go not. outside. Mm-hmm. People want to go outside. They're they're antsy. Dude. Dude, there was a fucking protest. There was a fucking protest to the stay at home. And this friend of mine, yes, this friend of mine, who one of my former roommates uh, from UCSD, hilariously tweeted uh, tweeted out, "Critical battery, please charge." It is charging, you stupid thing. What do you think you're plugged in for? (sighs) What was that? It was my fucking um, speaker thing. Here's the funny thing. Who you hiding? I don't know how to. <laughs> I don't know how to charge it. Like you think it'd be as simple as like sticking the damn cable and the cord in, plugging it in the wall, but it won't charge. It just won't charge. So and it's an ion speaker shit. Like I don't. Whatever. <sighs> what was I saying? Your friend. Your friend. Oh yes, he t- he um he tweeted out something hilarious in the sense that um how do those do those idiots protesting realize they're protesting staying at home and they're wearing masks? They're literally wearing face masks while they're protesting having to stay at home. I think you're you have a statement that I didn't believe in before, but I but I fully believe in now is that you know <laughs> nothing compares to the stupidity of the American people. It you you just don't you just I've don't. been saying that shit how long Kyle like ever since we met I don't yeah probably but the thing is is that I 
again, this is why history is doomed to to you repeat, know, repeat itself. itself, you know, and people aren't going to learn because they... it just goes back to humanity failing to learn from their mistakes. You know, they, they how many times they have to be told failure is the greatest teacher and they ignore it completely. Maybe I've that's why a lot of people are years. pissed with uh, The Last Jedi. I know. That's the entire thesis of the film. Okay, question. Exactly. Do you think they're too lazy to learn or do you think they just don't care? A lot of people don't realize, and a lot of people are too arrogant to realize. So there's a lot of things. I've always said, never underestimate the ignorance and stupidity of the American people. And I've usually used that con in, in the context of elections. But now it's being used in just every, common every sense. Every sense of the word, yeah. Senior. One of the things that I've... I've uh, just to... I want to make sure I say this because it's actually a pretty great quote. I think it was from Thomas Paine. Um, you don't know who that is. Revolutionary War era. Look him up. Writer of Common Sense. Okay. He said, the problem with common sense is that it's not very common. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Um, yeah. Oh, going back to Disney, um, what do you think of the whole uh, uh, notion that Netflix is now worth more than Disney? Um, I'm not an economist. I, I've i studied economics. Um, I'm kind of a renegade in the sense that I kind of reject the premise of economics uh, and markets because I um, find the entire atmosphere in terms of their logic and in their thinking thinking and rationale to be toxic and um why ultimately i hate capitalism um so when comments like those netflix which is a streaming empire but it's still a streaming service is how that is worth more than disney um my ass, it's worth more than Disney. And again, I'm saying this as somebody who's been like highly critical of the company in recent years. But um Well Disney's losing thirty Disney, million a day. They're they're losing thirty million dollars a day. I understand that. And in the context of coronavirus, sure, Netflix right now is worth more because they're making money because they're a streaming service. And again, just the nature of our damn uh, society, because people are staying at home, people are using Netflix. Netflix is gaining money. Disney is not, because a lot of Disney's big money makers involve you having to go out and experience them with large crowds of people. So that's why it's gotten to that point. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think that this is going to result in some kind of a massive acquisition of Disney. I think ultimately, though, a weaker no Disney is a good thing. Apple, maybe. Apple's been trying to gain their way into the entertainment uh, industry. They uh, they launched Apple TV Plus. Apparently, one of their shows was doing well. But I mean, they've been gunning to make a big, big play in entertainment for a while. So, it if did. anyone would, it would be Apple. And Disney, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say this, but they're pretty much the king of media. Media entertainment, yeah. So, I don't think anyone would in this time. And uh, one thing that Peter said in one of the Red Spotlight podcasts is that ultimately, a weaker Disney is a good thing. Um, you know, in the, not in the sense that the the company is like literally falling apart at the seams. But like it may, it may it might be a good thing if if Disney were just humbled a little bit. Yeah, because I feel a lot of their high and mighty arrogance, because of how many records they've broken in the last few years, have made them. Whenever they get to that level of um, power, they don't really care <laughs> when they you know when they flex about all the the things that could be affected by it and they own I'm hoping, everything and right whatever. right i'm i'm just hoping that a more humble disney would result in more creative avenues you know and not yeah. just entertainment but the parks as well so of course in the immediate short term things are going to get cut back because as we just said the company is losing a lot of money every single day 
And I don't know if you've read this, but as far as the parks are concerned, they're looking, Bob Iger is looking very seriously at trying to open these parks sooner than later by studying what China has been doing with, um, uh, you know, quarantining people or, or, or preventing them from coming on the premises. This whole notion that he's going to take everyone's temperature before they're even allowed into the park is a by normal standards in extre an extremity but one of the things that is so easily asked well i mean there are peop many people who are asymptomatic people i think it was grace randolph who said that people literally take anti-fever medication so they can get past certain things what we've learned in this pandemic is that you cannot trust them and that you can always count on them to lie yeah. so it scares me that disney I mean, it doesn't scare me that Disney is looking at how to continue the parks going forward, but what I'm scared is that they might do the unthinkable and like try and open them back up in June with this with these new drastic measures. And if that happens and if the crowds do come, that's going to be a disaster for the company because people are going to get sick and die. Yeah. And it's going to be a larger blow. They're going to lose a lot more money than they Yeah. than they are now. Um, I mean, freaking, uh, I know it's like nobody's, you know, uh, uh, bread and butter, but, um, but Bob Iger, uh, furloughed his salary. I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to lose more than that, buddy. If you, if you, uh, if you do this, I mean, it's, can I clarify one thing real quick before people call me a kook? I, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't suggest I didn't mean to suggest that I don't believe in economics. I meant to suggest that the whole rationale of in that world of thinking and things being worth they more. do not yeah yeah they they don't they don't necessarily gel with my sensibilities or my morals. I guess that's what I meant to say, just to be clear about that um but it's fair to say that everybody everybody is gonna be suffering as a result of this, yeah, like, but if money... we're talking about a m c yeah, go but ahead. money speaks louder, my friend. They right. They 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 want immediate. They, the, that's the thing that I noticed too is that everybody wants immediate results. Mm -hmm. Like the more immediate, the better. Um, and I don't think life should be that way. I think that if you want to do something right, it it needs to take time. You know, and that, I think that with everybody like so like inconvenienced and I'm putting that in asterisk inconvenienced about everything is it, it's it, it it's such a you would think you know if you're of you know the sound mind and body of like where this epidemic not epidemic pandemic is going you would think that this is something that you should consider but people are inconsiderate everybody wants to you know go immediately into it you know and and start start socializing again and you know joining up with the people but this is how like it gets worse and i to it doesn't people are not going to see that until it directly affects them um, because they have their, because everybody has their blinders on. They don't, they don't want to see past everything. Yes, it, I, I've seen Diz Twitter go crazy over like them announcing that Disney Parks is going to be closed. And then, uh, uh, some have taken it creatively. I, like, I've seen people recreate rides and all that stuff in their house and like, do all that on like TikTok and all that stuff, and I think that's really creative. But other people are like bitching and moaning, like, oh, I'm, "I'm gonna miss the Toros and all that stuff." I'm like, if I were okay, I'm a huge Disney fan, as you know, right, Alexis? I mean, would you? I mean, you host a Disney podcast, Kyle. I think you know, no one should question your Disney loyalty. Uh, I <laughs> yes, my loyalty. <laughs> um, if I were to. If I were to last seven to six years without stepping foot in a Disney park, you could last a couple of months, a few months. <laughs> we're talking about people who go every few weeks, <laughs> or yeah, maybe or even, even every week. Every like day. it's crazy. All these, you know, Disney to put it into perspective. I want to put it into perspective, though. I mean, 
too many people are being still to this day flippant, arrogant, and completely, in my view, inhumane to not understand the gravity of the situation. I have a tweet here by a reporter in the in terms of the death the death rate for coronavirus in the US alone. I want to read this tweet of reported coronavirus deaths in the US. And this is we're recording this on what day? This is April 17th, 2020. Uh-huh. Uh so this is the date of the recording when this is up it'll be obviously different, but 72 hours ago there was 25,000 dead. 48 hours ago, it was 27,000 dead. 24 hours ago, 32,000 dead. And right now, over 36,000 people have died. You see, and it's crazy. For you, to be, for you to be flippant and arrogant about the constraints on you, appreciate the fact you're not one of these 36,000 people who lost their lives because of the carelessness of our government. You know, it's so crazy. Last week in our own community, we were like at 80, and now we're at like 140, 150. And that's small and we for were like a, a bunch of other places. We're in a small town, and like that's a, that's a huge chunk. But like in perspective. And to be fair, in a, a small county, um, 143 confirmed cases, maybe even more so than that at this point, as of the date of this recording. Yeah. Three people died so far. Um. Which I think it's fucking nuts how like that that works and everything. Um, I don't know how many times we had to say nothing ever touches our valley. Nothing ever touches. I've always said if you threw a rock thirty years from now, it'd be the exact same way. It, we're like, Zika didn't come. Yeah, we're like the Internet Explorer of <laughs> communities. It takes thirty years for anything to like excel or like. Uh, gain traction or anything like that but it we like for coronavirus to have come here if something gets comes here it can go anywhere yeah literally because we're bottom of the barrel in terms of like things that it would come to us like dangerous things right like holy shit like the white walkers are literally right here and people are still acting. It's not a big deal. People are blowing it out of proportion. Guys, what the fuck? Again, blinders. Everybody's got their blinders on. Um, yeah. But Kyle, I want to know. So, um, and I'm sure listeners, because uh, we, we've been we, we've uh, been labeling you an essential worker, and you've been an essential worker in this pandemic. Um, how you holding up? I'm honestly, honest to God, I'm, I, I'm, burnt out right now. I want this fucking pandemic <laughs> to end. The i, the irony is, and I talked with this with Alexis and Peter on a different podcast with Red Spotlight, is you are working harder and more hours in a fucking pandemic than you were. And just n- before this, yes, I'm getting I'm getting more money, but what at what, what cost? <laughs> uh, uh, and honest to me, okay, here's the thing. At first, it was like, okay, people are like, this is like, uh, like hype, hype. They they they're starting to hoard, hoard what we what we sell. But, um, it, it's ridiculous now that I think that they're just purchasing what we sell just cause they're bored. I don't, I, I, I refuse to believe that people are getting it cause it is, it is a commodity that we sell, but, uh, for everybody in town to order what we sell 
in like and this this was a really like honest uh, right now i i just came back like an hour ago and that was one of the shittiest shift no that was the shittiest shift i ever had this this supersedes uh super bowl sunday the super the this supersedes valentine's day which that was rough but this it it chaos it was utterly chaos like the minute <laughs> like the minute you think everything's like all quiet on the western front bam you got like 50 orders you know right there waiting for you and yes it is work and all that stuff but you guys don't understand unless you are in it it's just like it's so freaking ridiculous like and again this is where i'm a firm believer because of where we are uh where my business uh does and what it what it uh what it provides that's why i'm a firm believer that when the when the movie theater is safely and i'm putting it in in bold letters safely come back they're going to see a boom and rise of things because right now people are going stir crazy they're they're bored uh they they want normalcy as soon as possible and this it and with this whole uh coronavirus shebang and where i work it 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 lends itself into that a notion where people are well you know i just think we got to be more conscious uh maybe show more appreciation i'm seeing a lot of uh shows and listening to a lot of podcasts that have been saying and I'm, i'm glad that people you know who i follow are being this way but like always like you know not just you know obviously the people on the front lines are the nurses and doctors who are putting their lives on the line to help the people who are infected and recover and everything in the hospitals and god right. bless them it's also of course our essential workers my dad's a farm worker he's going out every single day he's still working um he's being safe but we need food um he's an essential worker you're working at a place that serves food and makes food and people desperately needed it seems like now more than ever so it's like it's just it's a shame you guys aren't being paid even more because oh, of this way, right like that's the thing it's so funny because i see the people who don't cook at all <laughs> yeah because oh, you mean the 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 regulars the regular <laughs> oh shit <laughs> so i'm like okay this is like the third day you're ordering um but, oh okay I could see you just don't know how to cook at all. Um, but it's like, you know, what I do appreciate is that you guys, um, you know, your businesses, I'm sure, though, are, are I know some local businesses are, are, are going to be taking a huge toll as a result of this, you know, not being able to have, you know, the seating area to dine in. But the fact that you guys are still open to serve food, any all the businesses, and being safe about it is is just, there's a little bit of just comfort in that at least the businesses are mandating, um, you know, a lot of these procedures. And you know what? To to be fair to my community, from what I've been seeing, in the times that I've um, gone for a drive, every now and then I go for a drive just to like not go crazy. And I see people it, with the mask, it's like of night course. And day. Yes, okay. night and day, I'm seeing people. Not sorry. It's. I meant to say it's like night and day in terms of just how things have changed. Whereas people are outside walking with masks on. People, you know, with the cars walking by with masks on. Um, and then even, and I, I've said this several times to uh, my family, to just drive around and to see kids playing outside, kids and families on bikes, it's almost as if I traveled back to the 80s oh, because that's... that's how I've seen it depicted in the movies. It's how people are outside, um, of course, safely, but they're experiencing Mother Nature, I would assume. And it's just remarkable to see kids with no smartphones in their hands and doing something without a smartphone. I have been uh, with this whole thing. I still live with my family. Um, 25. It's the economy. Go figure um 
No shame in that, man. No shame in that. Look, look at the the hideous economy we've been dealt with by our uh, previous generation. So uh, I still I still live with uh, with my family, and we've been doing a lot more activities together. We've been playing more board games. We've been doing uh, uh we've been playing outside. You know, uh, doing with a ball, uh, uh, cornhole. Um, if you know what that is, you throw, you throw like a, a sand, a sand sack, I guess, into a, into a, a, a wooden hole in the, um, you know, from a distance. It's fun. It's a good, good game. Um, just more out- outdoor activities. We've been eating a lot, like food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's the same my, thing here. Like my mom's getting into cooking. Like she's like, I mean, I don't know what's going on with her, but she's been making her foods tasted a lot better now that she has no time. I mean, that she has all the time in the world. She's actually painted some of the flooring in the house. Like she even painted part of a fence. Like like the the kind of like we're we're going out of our way to do things to keep us busy. That's how bad things have gotten. Let's just be real. <laughs> Did she paint the Last Supper? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Not that kind of painting. I mean, like there was like there was a meme I saw during Easter because we just passed Easter. Um, there was a meme I saw. Oh, yeah, that like, happened. Um, <laughs> it was the Last Supper, but in the format of a Zoom call. <laughs> oh, <laughs> somebody just superimposed God. everything and yeah. or all the disciples and Jesus into uh, into like. Is there a reason we haven't used Zoom yet? Why is Zoom getting so popular? Like, what, I mean, we've had Google Hangout, Skype, and Facebook Messenger. Why is Zoom so popular now? I I don't know because it can hold so many people. You, I, I guess you could share. I mean, we on Google Hangouts, we could share the screen with each other. I don't know if you could share the screen individually and see everybody's individual screens. Maybe maybe that's a feature. Um, as far as I know, I think Zoom is only like Mac only, right? Mac and iOS. Uh, is it? I don't know about that. But, I mean, regardless of it, I mean, it's just like, I know I was watching this uh, Instagram story of one of my cousins um, who was having, like, this massive, like, 20-person Zoom call with, like, it's it, it kind of became like a virtual cousin reunion. Oh, yeah. Like, I wasn't there because I'm not blood, so you know I'm twice removed. Oh, twice removed. <laughs> yeah, long story. Too bad not three times. No, no. Distance no. uncle, aunts, cousins, twice removed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I saw that recently. I. I. I mean, I. I know I told you, but I. Won't. Pirates of the Caribbean. On the record, Pirates of the Caribbean still right, holds right, up. Right. Right. Still really holds up fun and everything like that of course that that movie's always great you know always all this time i've been focusing on like johnny depp's performance as jack sparrow in the in the pirates movies but goddamn like jeffrey rush is my like barbosa is my favorite pirates character like he that is going to rub people the wrong way kyle because you're like this johnny depp well not johnny depp but jack sparrow particularly super fan yeah i know like Wow, but like the way yeah, he... Barbosa is my favorite too, though I love Barbosa, and that that's why I was pissed. And when I came to uh, uh, the fifth movie, and they completely bastardized his character, um, <laughs> yeah. audio commentary: Dead Men Tell No Tales no. coming soon. No. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. We'll see where the wind takes us. Um, but Barbosa, I mean, like the way that he said this, you know, we're at the edge of the map, mate. Here there be monsters, you know, in uh, in Pirates One. It was such a good delivery of the line, you know, you best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. It's so like stupid little Kyle thinking that, you know, the oh the guy with the beads is the is the best character. No, it's actually Barbosa. Um controvert like Jack Sparrow is pretty popular. Come on, he's great. He is pretty popular, but I think I think the hype is with Johnny Depp though. I think that's I think that's the reason because he is like 
he was a heartthrob. He still is a heartthrob. He, uh, you know, despite controversies and all, you know, people still fawn over Depp, you know. Um, and, it, and it's crazy. Oh, there was a picture recently. Uh, not recently, but like two months ago before this whole shit hit the fan. Um, there was a there was a picture that uh Ross Halflin, he he's pretty much like a rock and roll star, um, of rock and roll uh uh photographers. Um and Alice Cooper's band, uh the Hollywood Vampires, uh they they introduced uh Kirk Hammett, the guitarist for Metallica, and they played a couple of songs together. And it was so cool to see a picture of Johnny and Kirk together mm. it's just like in, it's just really interesting um but yeah it's uh yeah what well, we're gonna talk about uh, clone wars right yes clone wars there was a in. big thing that happened with clone wars but um have you been keeping up with the season yeah until like today yeah i yeah i watched all of them because you guys because i saw a picture of ahsoka with r2 and i'm like they're just gonna talk about it uh, fuck it and so <laughs> fuck you guys I was waiting until everything i couldn't man i couldn't i couldn't um <laughs> you're like should we talk about briefly you're like jack about you're like jack when he uh, stole the aztec gold you know couldn't resist my <laughs> i couldn't um so you watch the um the bad batch arc and then also the one with ahsoka and the martez mm-hmm. sisters yeah, we should talk about briefly about those. What did you What did you make of that? Um, I thought the Bad Batch episodes was entertaining. Um, I prefer mm-hmm. the one with Ahsoka because it's Ahsoka. Because <laughs> it's Ahsoka, and I love Ahsoka. You know, she's yeah like top five Star Wars for me. Um, I the Bad Batch. It's because I I was like, why does why does this plot line sound so fucking familiar? It's because I've already seen it <laughs> before, um, uncompleted, of course. But um, yeah, we saw the unfinished version of that episode years ago. Yeah, yeah. but um, I I saw those episodes a while ago, so I was like, eh, why does this sound so familiar? And I was like, I looked it up. I was like, oh, that's why. Um, there were changes though. There were changes to the episodes. Some changes. There were scenes added with Anakin, Padme, Obi Wan, and Rex. Of course, but like the bulk of the episodes is still the same. It's the same story. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Ahsoka arc was really interesting. Just like her, like teetering yeah. on the whole like hiding who she is thing is really fascinating. And what she did and the dynamic between uh the sister, the Martez. That's the that's their uh, names. Yeah, the Martez sisters. It was Rafa and Trace. Rafa and Trace. Um, it was nice. Uh, it, there was little fan servicey moments in there. Um, is is uh, specifically with a certain location. Um, that uh, yeah, but it worked. It worked in the context of the story. Why they would be there. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. But then, oh God, old friends, not forgotten. That caught Can me. we, can we, I want to, can we save that real quick? Because there's, um, I know I'm just, giving I my say brief, about... I'm just giving my brief summary of like my feelings towards it, towards it all. Um, old, old friends, not forgotten. That caught me heavily in the feels like there were so many moments from like we'll get to it but like there's so many moments that like this is where you feel like this is the the showdown of this whole entire series um and honestly there was moments where i was like oh the show is back in a in a huge big way you know um yeah i don't know uh what did you think about him so yeah, I agree with you on Bad Batch. It was good. It was fun. But um I definitely preferred the Ahsoka one because it was just far more engaging with, you know, seeing Ahsoka um try to see a life for herself, you know, away from being a Jedi or thinking like one. 
and she really did form a bond with the Martez sisters. It's just, you know, the whole thing is she's still very much acted like a Jedi, even though she doesn't, she's not a Jedi anymore. And the, the whole thing about that arc was to really instill. It's kind of like Catholicism. You can't shake it off. <laughs> It, it it's to really instill this, uh, well, not really instill, but it's to reinforce her suspicion and her distrust of the Jedi Council with much more nuance in terms of even something she herself was not aware of, and that is how the Jedi at large had forgotten about everybody else beside the war. I mean, we're talking about many different things, right? But like just the fact that the Martez lost their family because of, you know, a prison breakout and the Jedi did nothing about it. They just said they're one with the force now. So like her encounter with the sisters very much reinforced her decision to leave. And it reminded her of what people want the Jedi to be instead of what they are at the moment. So yeah. I thought it was very interesting. And look, I wanted to mention this about that arc as well. <sighs> the Star Wars community is still, segments of it are still very toxic. Have you seen the stuff that they've been throwing at, at, at the Martez sisters? Nope. And I refuse to. <laughs> I'm not going to go into the details of it, but basically the gist of it is that they they... They find the whole arc boring, useless, and of course, the punching bags happen to be the two female characters who are not Ahsoka, and they've they've basically called them annoying and boring and a waste of time, the characters and the arc themselves. And it was all encapsulated with one thumbnail by one of these toxic people that like was talking about like how Clone Wars went woke and shit like that. And in the thumbnail, it had the Martez sisters as an example of that. But they also, next to it, next to them, there was this scene that was edited out of the original version of the Bad Batch episodes, which showed a highly sexualized image of Padme on the Bad Batch's ship. Um, it showed her in a sexy pose, basically, Padme Amidala. And... They use that as something that should have stayed in, but was cut out because of wokeness. And it just makes me so enraged because it's as if they don't realize that in that thumbnail, they're telegraphing that they don't want to see strong female characters. They want to see sexualized like things that don't speak their minds. And that can be made fun of, like, locker room talk and shit like that. Like, what the fuck? The reason that was cut out was because they wanted to put in the scene between Anakin and Padme interacting because there would be no scenes, next to no scenes with Padme in the entire season. And they wanted to give, you know, development to that relationship that was about to crumble in episode three. That was, like, the best scene of that episode. I th and... <sighs> okay. Speaking of that, um... I, we were a lot closer to episode three than I thought. <laughs> she's pregnant. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. She's she's, she's pregnant. obviously pregnant, and she. I don't know how Anakin didn't figure that figure it out. Like she's obviously pregnant in that scene. <laughs> well, Anakin's stupid. Let's be real here. <laughs> He's just a jock. Well, let's, let's to be, be fair to him, though. No, well, let's be real though. He's been fucked with by everybody. Everyone's lied to him. <laughs> they don't trust him. And they make him feel like at a distance. Except for Palpy. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you cry about it like you did with Patamame or Panda Bear or something like that? <laughs> and I want to be clear though, because I've seen other fans who weren't who weren't exactly thrilled with the with that arc for other reasons, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, it doesn't have to be everybody's cup of tea, but I'm just, I'm singling out the people who are going at this whole wokeness like narrative. Like, fuck yourself. When in man. reality, like, that's not what this is about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, did that sound sexist to you, what I just described? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's like, 
guys, what happened to you? Like, were you always this way? Are you just doing it for the money now? Like, I feel like people are just doing it just to make money off of it now. I watched the episodes that I was missing with uh, with my little brother, Zach, because he just wanted to chill with me. So I was like, okay. I put, Which episode? Um, The whole uh, Martez sisters uh, arc. And uh, oh. all that stuff. And that was like the first time he like sat down and like kind of watched a Star Wars. I mean, he was on his phone playing games and all that stuff. But um, but he would like he would watch like increments in there, and he would be like this. So what this show is is it's a it's a a a show with a good story, but with like with child childlike dialogue. That's what he said. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's pretty much Star Wars in a nutshell. That's Star Wars, man. I mean, uh, scruffy looking nerf, nerf herder. herder. That's the <laughs> example that I use. Scruffy looking nerf herder. Who's scruffy looking? Uh, I used to blast wall brats back at home. Um, the reason why Star Wars, Star Wars, the movies work so well is because they were inspired by Saturday morning cartoons in a sense, and that, they're kind of how they have a vibe like that. Come on, that uh, Come on. George Lucas used to watch, you know, and that yeah. is in bare bones essence Star Wars. I mean, who every time somebody makes a Star Wars movie, they should not watch Star Wars; they should watch Flash Gordon. They should watch all these uh, Saturday morning serials that George watched. They shouldn't watch Star Wars; they should watch those. Uh, and I think that will give you... And I mean, to be fair, though, like the Clone Wars in general, like, I mean, we've had so many episodes, but the Clone Wars, they got away with a lot of stuff in terms of like, there have been episodes that have been censored because there's been like, you know, people have been decapitated, stabbed, um, murdered horribly, like, for, there's been some vicious... Yeah. For Disney Plus? No, 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 no. When uh, the Clone Wars was airing, in its time, in Cartoon Network, there were certain scenes that were edited out by Cartoon Network. Okay. So, like, in the Arc Trooper episode, the episode where Ventress and Grievous are attacking Camino, she, Ventress kills a uh, clone trooper, and originally she just kills him, that's that, but in the scene that was edited out is she kills him, uses the Force uh, to bring him close she she uses the force, picks him up, stabs him with her lightsaber, and kisses him on the lips. Are we back? Yeah. Sorry about that. And it was saying, oh, there was a scene where she kisses a, a clone trooper on the lips as she kills him. So, just stuff like that. That's BDE right there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to say, though, um, there's this YouTube channel called Star Wars Audio Comics. Um, they have some great stuff. Is it is what it sounds. They take the comic books, the official canon comic books, and they basically hire Turn it voice into actors. Audio dramas, exactly. And so, and this was a newer version, not the older ones that we heard like years ago. I like how but I listen in the age of podcasts. I like how those that medium has come back, like radio dramas. Yes, I love it. Yeah, um, they took the four part comic that was based on. Um, Darth Maul in the series that we didn't get to see, mm. Son of Dathomir. They took the, that four-part uh, comic and it just felt like four episodes of the Clone Wars. So if uh, if you want to see what happens to Darth Maul in between Siege of Mandalore and the last time we saw him in the series, I highly recommend you go. Uh, it's called Star Wars Audio Comics YouTube channel, and it's a four-part um, series, Son of Dathomir. Great, it, it's amazing stuff, and it's honestly still a shame that wasn't 
like animated because it had like great showdowns between Darth Sidious and Mother Talzin. You had Grievous being badass and effective against Maul and Mother Talzin. Dooku against the Jedi with Maul and Maul and Dooku teaming up. It was an all out like it was a huge arc, and it's a shame that that one didn't get to be animated. But we have the story, and it's canon, so it's also very good. So go check it out. And since we're plugging things, a highly important piece of this whole Clone Wars saga is, of course, Dark Disciple, um, which is the final story of Asajj Ventress with uh, Quinlan Voss. Um, so. Okay. Yeah. That was based on eight unproduced episodes of the Clone Wars that were written by Katie Lucas, George's daughter. So, Do you want to dive uh, right into uh, Old Friends uh, yes. Not Forgotten? Um, I was like, okay, we're like probably like a few months off from, from, uh, <laughs> from Revenge of the Sith, but You no, thought that, really? <laughs> I thought that, yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, that, this is, this is where that is and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, we're there. But then no, no, it, it like, <laughs> when, uh, when Obi-Wan said, we have an imagine to say we are uh we have to go uh, uh general grievous has uh has uh, raided what is it coruscant uh let's do it um and i was like oh <laughs> oh wow okay we're we're here revenge of the sith is here a lot of the details of this episode we've known for years i mean as far as the Siege of Mandalore, as always, you know, it, it was referenced way back in the episode called Relics of the Old Republic and Star Wars Rebels years and years ago. The whole notion of a Siege of Mandalore was always intended to be the series finale of Star Wars The Clone Wars, and it was always envisioned to have crossed over with the events of Revenge of the Sith. So that was, I was not necessarily surprised, but that must have been quite a shock for you then as what you're saying, because it's literally yeah, not it, months. It's the day. It's the, the same day. Like the same day. Yeah. Or whatever Star Wars lingo means day. Um, I, 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 yeah, I was like, okay, so we're going to, we're going to do this. Uh, that means that we're probably looking at the final interaction of just Anakin as Anakin and Ahsoka. Well, if we can take one quick step back and that is to really endlessly compliment the fantastic quality in terms of making this a seismic event and God bless Dave Filoni because this first episode of this four part episode series that'll end the whole show are you there mm-hmm okay sorry it gets well, having a little issue with the wi-fi people um for it to begin with ahsoka's theme and then a like the classic traditional lucasfilm ltd logo mm -hmm. and then it limited it opens up with right 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 it opens up with John it, Williams like a, crawl like, music. <laughs> I was, I literally jumped out of my seat. I was uh, up at, I think it was maybe 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I was watching this on Disney Plus. And I have to tell you, like, you know, um, getting into it, I was just overcome with emotion before even turning on the episode because it just, it, it, it dawned on me that. I'm I'm living in a reality where I finally get to see the finale of something that meant so much to me and it's it's literally right here in front of my fingertips and it's being realized and I I just had to I had to compose myself just to get ready because like holy crap I, okay how is this here I really, <laughs> I watched everything in a fell swoop and I wasn't like I was like okay we're here already when when the um yeah when the red logo because you know that it's gonna be a special episode when if it's a red logo when the logo is red <laughs> um 
you know you're in for a treat. And then like the way it started with Anakin, he like also add nice added level of detail. The uh, Anakin having the the longer hair um, versus what we're used to seeing Dude. him in Clone Wars. And I'm like, Dude. this is Episode Three, Anakin, right here. The animation, that just a slight touch is like Obi Wan, that fucking robe. Like, that's not easy to animate. That's why he hardly ever wore it in the animated series, but holy crap, was that. And then also, if you noticed the touch of gray on his side beard, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it has gotten so damn good. Like, this is something that we would have seen in 20. 20- 13 when it went off the air like seven years seven years in the making this moment has been leading to just seven years of like being in the wilderness not knowing if we'll ever see something like that and you know what when when disney plus was you know announced as a concept my number one wish was for them to how somehow make the siege of mandalore happen and you're right though but what was pretty evident from the beginning uh, moments of this episode, not just in, in, in the opening, but also in like the whole sequence of Anakin and Obi-Wan in the battle uh-huh. and the music, especially this was made to feel like a movie. Like this is a star Wars movie. This isn't an episode of the clone wars, like the difference in tone and just like approach with this compared to the episodes that you said that you binged beforehand could not be more stark yeah. and the music especially which whereas usually it's just done on synth like on big occasions they do spring for a full a full orchestra um and damn could you notice the music in this yeah um oh by the way nice little add a touch to uh everything like that i liked the um the kind of 80s throwback kind of song that was playing in the marketplace that um what's her name was uh was eating at with uh with ahsoka um nice added level of detail um i yeah i mean you first start off the episode you know and it's just like a siege and you know just battle droids and all that stuff you hear the battle droid i miss dude i <laughs> Such will about the prequels. I miss the fucking battle droids. Like holy shit! Like the rotten rotten, you know things. You know, <laughs> hey, blast him! Oh, and I'm has- Jedi Master Jedi uh, Anakin Skywalker is res- surrendering. You know, and the I- prequel era is awesome, man. Like you know, the movies, the movies are the movies, and we've said all there is to say about how they're just horribly executed films. Uh-huh. But what was never in question was that the story of those movies and this era is beautiful and great. Like, I've always loved the prequel era, and the Clone Wars especially really, I think, has made all of us more appreciative of George's vision. Uh Like, the Clone Wars is George Lucas's baby, but it also is Dave Filoni's baby, because Dave Dave was the one that... Yeah, Davey was the one that uh, executed a lot of um, what George wanted to do. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Obi Wan. That whole opening battle. Obi Wan. I don't know if you noticed tired. this, but that whole. Yeah. Well, I mean, look what happens in a few minutes <laughs> with him. Um. <laughs> um that whole opening sequence um, on that planet was very much made to mirror the opening of that Clone Wars movie and the Battle of Christophsis. If you I know that Clone Wars movie that no one likes, but the opening battle was very much mi- mirrored there. <laughs> Including me. I don't I don't particularly like the movie. I mean, the only... No one does. No one does. The only okay thing, and I'm putting it in quotations okay, is the fact that it introduces Ahsoka, but other than that, on every other level, it's just like... And it's well, not it's even like a good... You... Yeah. And it's not even a good introduction to Ahsoka. She's like the stark contrast of like her in the show versus her in the movie. She is very like Anakin as like all the worst qualities that we thought about with Anakin being whiny and all that stuff and 
everything like that. But then when we get into the TV show, when she flips a dime and she's actually more, um, more likable, um, I guess. But yeah, Clone Wars. It. Why is it that when I introduced you to this series, I. I didn't show you that movie. In fact, I think you had watched all of the show before you even watched the movie. <laughs> Cause I knew I knew that if I showed you that movie you wouldn't watch the the show. <laughs> no, I would have actually I would absolutely shut that shit down, no question. Mm-hmm. Um but the Clone War is like the I, as a show uh, is really, really good Star Wars content. You know, I wouldn't consider it like the best show ever or like one of the one of the greatest shows ever. But what it does damn well is recapture some Star Wars magic, you know, with its storytelling of where it could do what it could go. You know, there is fan service moments here and there. Yes. But the thing that really works is that it does different things um, with what it has in the Star Wars universe, and I think that's very bare bones, knuckles Star Wars, you know. Um, and Clone Wars is that bitch. <laughs> it it does do that. Um, I uh, the episode that we we're talking about is uh, to me very anxiety inducing. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you why. Cause I know like at the drop of a dime, shit's going to hit the fan pretty damn soon. Um, how do you know that Kyle? How do you know that? Cause there's a movie about it called the revenge of the Sith. Um, and I, Oh yeah. Okay. Um, also, um, little at a level of detail that my brother caught on that, um, that I didn't notice the the um gangster guy that like had the um that was the spice trader in the previous arc uh the soka arc he, his mouth and his fingers were uh orange dusted from the spice uh-huh oh so i like that detail that's a nice little detail that they added um yeah, but anyway, the episode that we're the um the part one of the four part finale, a knowing everything. I mean, it sucks knowing what's gonna transpire, but again, it adds a level of detail of like how good this is. Um, mm-hmm. leading up to Maul and everything like that. Maul like he's still on the revenge mission trying to kill Obi-Wan and all that stuff. Cause honestly like that revenge is the only thing he has left. That's it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> he's a former shell of the, of the, of the person he was before. Um, Palpatine pretty much showed him his place, you know, and again, you could, uh, uh, read sons of death Amir. But, like, the revenge between him and Obi-Wan is the only thing that he has left. And, honestly, like, this is, like, the the big, broad spectrum of that. And and also, like, that's the genuine foreground of it. Uh, Really, you're just following Ahsoka throughout all this. I mean, Ahsoka is the main character of Clone Wars. Let's be real here. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... But the thing is, is that um, that's why in episode uh, ser- uh, season six, it felt a little off to me a little bit because we were missing that key component, which is Ahsoka. Right. Ahsoka was such a like a bare bones essential of what uh, the Clone Wars was that I, it just felt off putting. Going into this episode here, um, it's so nice. First of all, that reu- reunion between her and Rex was something else and really special. Um, especially knowing how like further down the line and rebels, like how everything, uh, uh, fits in with that. Um, I like how it is the 501st, um, squadron that, um, Mm -hmm. that, uh, that is the Ahsoka clones, I guess. I don't know what the name of their, of their, uh, the Ahsoka team is. Um, Team Tano. There it is. Team Tano. Um, 
it it was really nice and i like how also um rex was uh promoted commander the day before she hits mm-hmm. the fan yeah <laughs> funny and hilarious uh, it's like um it's like uh it reminds me of um remember daisy when she was called sky mm-hmm. where she was she was made an honorary shield agent the day that shield fell yeah agents of shield yeah that show yep that show which is also ending this year so i have quite a greatest hits of uh emotional uh conclusions coming up pretty soon dude like there was some great just acting also in this movie too like uh, things that come to my mind and pretty tense too was that briefing scene with bo katan um just like when she challenges Obi-Wan, like, my sister was murdered. I thought she meant something to you. Like, holy crap. And Obi-Wan just like, I love the cut of Obi-Wan like saying, well, look, I, I, I cannot be emotionally attached to this. And then it cuts to Anakin, who is just like, dude, come on. Like, you know, yeah. you know how things go. Um. Uh, but that scene that you were talking about where they where she sees the clones and they painted their helmets in honor of her all of this was done for her and re- remind all of our listeners here that this was a moment that was literally described beat for beat by Dave Filoni at I think it was either a comic con or a celebration panel of some sort for the clone wars they were recapping this particular moment and it was as emotional then as it is now just to see, you know, this outpouring of support. It almost felt like watching Ahsoka realize how much she's loved, not just by her former family, but also by the Star Wars community itself. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the story of Ahsoka has always been like she's been the perpetual underdog. She was so loath, despised, and hated from the, her first introduction in that movie. And look how far she's come now. Where people were <laughs> rallying up, like putting like the hashtag Ahsoka lives mm-hmm. um, trend on Twitter and whatever. I mean, she's so big of a character, like... You know that they've made, that she's made an impact where uh, they even put her voice in, in Rise the Rise of Skywalker. Of Skywalker. Yeah, and uh, I like also, Kevin Feige could never. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fuck him. Kevin Feige um, could never. Um, I, yeah, like that, that little honor and all that stuff. And also when, uh, when... Uh, when Rex said to Ahsoka that, you know, uh, some things never change, you know, kind of thing <laughs> when after they were, you know, they just, they just got done beating up some bad guys and, you know, rubble rousing around. I, I that puts a smile on my face. I, that puts a smile yep. on my face. Just like knowing where they are in, 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 in terms of like, how their camaraderie is concerned. Well, yeah, I mean, Ahsoka and Rex are the big, like, original characters from that show that have, like, you know, had a life beyond just the series. And, like, this finale is very much for them, uh, more so than Anakin and Obi Wan, because they get their finale, their finale in, uh, in the movie. Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I like how, like, this, this whole, uh, 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 finale is centered on them. We could see where the finale is with Anakin and Obi Wan elsewhere, you know. And I like how they. Yeah, we literally can. Yeah. Yeah, and I like how we could just like focus in on what's going on after that. But there's also a lot of interesting stuff because, in in, in many ways, and and this is not to degrade or to diminish Luke Skywalker's amazing arc in the Last Jedi, but like Ahsoka is very much leaning in that direction as Luke was like just years and years later, whereas like she's come to realize just how ineffective and how corrupt the Jedi have become like that exchange between her and Obi-Wan 
you know, there were some people who were saying that she wasn't being fair. I mean, she says it herself. She's not trying to be fair in her, like, just outrage of, like, the Republic turning their back on Mandalore uh, when they know that a Sith Lord is secretly in control of a planet. And yes, there. I mean, there were some good points in that exchange that the capital is being attacked, but Ahsoka was right that they're not going to go back to Coruscant to save the people. They're going back to save the Chancellor. Yeah. And when she says, she literally says, you're just playing politics as always. Like, fuck. <laughs> like, shit, man. <laughs> yeah, and it also, it's like a pointless, like, it... fuck Palpatine. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> man, how did, I mean, that was a pretty tense, like, exchange. Like, to me, that was as tense as seeing, um... As seeing Tony Stark and Steve Rogers, like um, when Tony blew up at Steve Rogers in the beginning of Endgame, when like there's no trust, liar. That sequence there, and in this right here, like ah- Ahsoka was like she came to play here. <laughs> He's like, uh, uh-uh. uh, you need to support the siege. And as far as that final interaction, and I do believe it is the final time we will see Ahsoka and Anakin see each other, at least in the sense of. I do I do suspect that perhaps the in a civil manner. I do suspect though, yeah, in a civil, I suspect though that the ending of the last episode may go beyond the events of um episode uh 3 and maybe even episode 6, maybe. Like uh the finale of Star Wars Rebels did. Um but as far as before Anakin turns to the dark side, this is the final exchange between them. I think Ahsoka said in Rebels, the last time I saw him, he was running off to save the Chancellor. And then from that point forward, until Rebels, she thinks that he's dead. So from that's Order where things are going. Yeah. Right. And that final exchange was just so moving. And I don't even realize this myself. Um, until it's pointed out to me on someone on Twitter, but like the way that the, the shots are framed, like that goodbye was exactly framed when they, they first reunite. met again in, uh, when, Rebels. Mm-hmm. Like that's incredible, man. Like I love it. <laughs> oh God. Twilight of the Apprentice. That, that fucking breaks my heart. Just cause like it's Sky Guy. Sky guy, you know that just like it, 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 it hurts, it hurts. Um, like when uh the previous arc when uh she was with the what whatever sisters, it, she said like you know oh who taught you how to how to be like that and she said you know my older brother. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That <laughs> hit hard, dude. That hit in the right places. Um, just like them too, cause that like basically, them too is the heart of the show to me. I think, mm, at least. yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Anakin and Ahsoka, it's always a, it's always a squib, squid. What's the, what's what was Anakin's the, nickname for? Snips. Snips. Yeah. Okay. Snips and uh, squib. <laughs> squib. Okay, that's a Harry Potter term. For a non-magical wizard, um, snips, snips, and sky guy, that 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 hurts. That hurts, and that there, there wasn't pomp and circumstance to their reu- reuniting. It was just like hi and goodbye kind of thing. It it it, it again. It's on par for the course of where everything is and the tragedy of the Skywalkers and everything like that. It is this huge thing that is I think one of the biggest cruxes of how the prequels work because of this uh, emotional uh, stakes that is put in the show um, and that's where you get like and again I can't watch uh, much like uh, Alexis Moreno I can't watch Revenge of the Sith again knowing everything that's that's happened in between 2 and 3 uh, in regards to the Clone Wars um, yeah, you just you grow it attached to these characters because, you know, it, again, it's like how 
what's it uh, Han, Luke, and Leia become like you know household names like Ahsoka, um, uh, Anakin, and Obi Wan become like uh, a staple and in, in the Clone Wars um, state of things. I just I don't know. I I can't and wait. The action man. Yes, I can't wait to see where this thing goes. Cause... The action, dude, 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 dude. Come on, look. The action. Oh my god, that that sequence when they're like barreling down on Sindari, the city of of Mandalore, like holy crap! Seeing Ahsoka back in action, like she, you can tell that she was having so much fun using her lightsabers, um, and just like oh my god, that was one of the best action sequences in any like episode of the Clone Wars series. Like holy shit, that was great, absolutely amazing. I can't get over just how great the episode was. And um, did you catch all the Easter eggs uh, sprinkled throughout the episode? Like it, to like other kind of like, you know, Dave always brings references. Like <laughs> he always has like a, a list of references to every single episode. Did you catch okay. all of them? Name some and I'll say yes or no. Okay. So in the well, we see basically in the opening like montage of the episode, we see Ayla Sakura is on um, Felucia. We see that Plo Koon is on Kate and Amoidia. Those are basically the shots from the movie where they die. Mm -hmm. um, we see that um, in the montage anyway that uh, a lot of the elder like council Jedi people have been like sent to the to the farther outer rim planets, far from the core worlds where they'll be most vulnerable. I wonder if that was an accident. Of course it wasn't an accident. Um, they're perfectly placed where they'll be executed when Order 66 happens. You see Depa Balaba and uh, Caleb Dune, who is actually Kanan Jarrus in the Star Wars Rebel series, on a hollow conference with the other Jedi. Um, Vanessa Marshall, who, who did the voice for Harris and Dula. Uh -huh. She uh, did the voice for Rook Cass, which is one of Maul's Mandalorians. Uh, Ahsoka uses the code name Fulcrum to contact Admiral Yolorin that, mm -hmm. you know, to establish that. So you also see people like Gar Saxon, who was one of the uh, uh, adversaries of Sabine Wren in the Rebels storyline, the Mandalorian storyline in Rebels. So, like, a lot of great stuff. And, I mean, just, like, it, it is just, like, a big fan moment, but, like, you know, when the alarm starts going in off in Obi-Wan, and you know, just, you know what it is, like, uh, Coruscant's been attacked. General Grievous. Um, they even mentioned that Shock T has been sent to protect the Chancellor. And and like even though like the the original like miniseries, the 2003 series is not officially canon, they basically kind of act as if it was because a lot of the events that happened in in the Battle of Coruscant, which led into Revenge of the Sith, are kind of basically how things went down. So. Yeah, like the so fact that we're literally that and see where that goes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. I literally can't wait. And to me, like this is, I haven't been this moved by anything Star Wars since Last Jedi. Easily, easily. This brought you back. <laughs> it, it brought me back, man. And you know what? It's like just it, when I thought I was out. Pull they pull me back. back. <laughs> no, no, man. Like, this is something that I've waited seven years to see. And the amount of emotion that I felt, you You're know. like serious black. <laughs> I've done my waiting. 12 years of it. And ask a bad. It also just made me so emotional seeing a lot of, like, Clone Wars fans reacting on YouTube. I do a lot of, like, I watch a lot of reaction videos to, like, my favorite shows. But to see long-term fans who have also, like, gone through the exact same thing that I did, which was like, you know, the, the stages of grief and like not never knowing how it would have ended and to see them get emotional. It it was just, it was something that I, de I definitely needed in like the dark times that we're living in right now. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's a great pick me up. <laughs> you know, it really is. Um, a couple, a few years ago, um, I was anticipating in a galaxy far, far away. Sure, um, I thought that this, like what we're seeing, 
on Disney Plus, I thought that we were going to get that in book form. Mm. Yeah, I think that was the safe bet because they were finding out different in, in the space that the show was canceled and, and they were moving on to Rebels. Um, it just seemed that, um, and they were trying to find different ways because some episodes were released on StarWars.com, uh, unfinished episodes. Some were released um, for a celebration event. Uh, Dark Disciple there, was made into a novel. Son of Dathomir was made into a comic book. They were trying to figure out ways to give a lot of closure to the series. And a lot of closure, mind you, had been fulfilled with Rebels itself, with Ahsoka and Vader and, and Maul, like, and the Mandalorians. Like, it's amazing to me that a series that was canceled eight years ago had been so beloved to the point where we're, I mean, how many times have we come back and, like, you know, added in an extra footnote in this thing called clone wars it's more popular now than it ever was and like to think that in the time that this was airing in like on cartoon network a lot of star wars fans didn't really know what this was and didn't really take it all that seriously and um yeah and then to yeah. like where we have like full blast like you know packed house uh panels on a you know at celebration and whatnot it's it, it's one of those crazy phenomenons that just is like and also i think i firmly believe that when the thing this whole thing is over i think it's gonna go the way of the office on uh on uh on disney plus uh, with mm -hmm. people because i just barely just dove into the office and i think that a lot of people are gonna 15 years after it first aired <laughs> yeah um if you uh believe it or not Got really sour in the last uh, two seasons, but like uh, the rest, like goddamn good television. Um, I it's gonna go in that way where people discover, keep on discovering the show, um, because like like I heard um uh Jenna Fisher she was on uh she was on I think Colbert or something like that and uh, they were talking about like how do you feel about like the staying power of the office and she said oh people still uh you know younger kids you know who weren't even alive during the um, the run of the show are getting into the show now and watching you know the show and uh quoting and tweeting me quotes of you know from pam you know uh, <laughs> to me as a you know just barely discovering what this uh show was that was that means so much to me and i feel like that that's how like dave filoni uh uh ashley Eckstein, you know the list goes on of of people who have been in that and i think that that's the way that they feel about this this show because people are rediscovering it um and uh even my brother my brother was speaking interest of like i want to dive into clone wars you know my girlfriend um uh, my brother's girlfriend he she's a huge star wars fan and like star wars and all that stuff and they talk star wars um it's there it's yeah. on disney plus it, it's right there it, it's never been easier to watch the clone wars yeah <laughs> and now that you're the the series finale is coming coming to a coming to a close I like honestly you have the entire library of it and oh my god I'm I'm almost just envious because like they they can get to experience the show without like the seven year fucking hiatus <laughs> yeah <laughs> that we that the rest of us had to endure basically <laughs> um I d imagine just waiting seven years for a show to wrap up <laughs> okay here's the thing I wasn't waiting because I was like okay that's it I, I was already... Well, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying, though. I've, I've, I, I was never waiting because I expected it to come at some point. I mean, I, I didn't. But the fact that it is coming now, the duration of time that has passed has been seven years. 
it's not as if like I waited every single day of my life to like, like for it to come. You're like fucking Ray in the Force Awakens. You're just like putting, uh, scratching, you're just scratching the uh, the days off until. The no, Clone I mean Wars to me, back. this is a gift. It really is. Like I, I couldn't be more thankful and appreciative that, like, I on this like, I would have been happy with them just doing these four, these last four episodes, and that was it. I mean, I'm happy we got more. I know people are complaining that, well, why only 12 episodes? I don't know, because, like, this shit's expensive. Have you not seen the animation? Like, holy crap. Like, this is not easy to make. Not cheap. I think, and yeah, but also, like, the actors have gotten a little bit bigger in terms of, like, with their voice acting work. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, Matt Lanter, uh, Ashley Eckstein, um, uh, what's his name? James Tar. Taylor Arnold. James Arnold. James Jim Arnold Taylor. Taylor. Um, you know, D. Bradley Baker's always working. Uh Sam Whitwer. Uh oh, yeah. they, like these these guys are like huge in the voice acting world and it's kind of hard to get them these days. Um so you can't just continue on, you know, willy nilly uh trying to produce this show. Um it's kind of like how they got uh, them uh, the cast of Arrested Development to do Arrested Development again. Um, yeah, it's like you know why is it in this weird format of like people, you know they're they're so disjointed from each other and all this stuff. I'm like, have you, do you know what you're working with? The casts uh, trying to get these uh, uh, trying to get these stories together. Um, it is ridiculous of how it is, um, but nevertheless we have it. We're we're gonna have our our cake and eat it too, mm-hmm. you know. And I, honestly, I think that that's it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. No, not a bad thing at all. Um, and especially in a time like this. I mean, yeah, the time we need it. We need it. The time of my corona. <laughs> um, too soon. Is it too soon to like? make this whole pandemic of a meme i don't know i don't know if i if i made you upset i'm sorry um anyway final thoughts i love star wars (laughs) you know what i love star wars too yeah and- oh wait 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 i do have a final thought i do have one final thought i'm so sorry but this is uh um i watched there was like this 30 minute like this guy on youtube look for it uh, just type it on youtube star wars retrospective they uh updated it with um rise of skywalker footage but it basically was like this 35 minute like retrospective montage of all nine star wars movies and it made me so emotional um, and even though I don't like episode nine, like that montage actually made me kind of understand what some people see in that movie and why they liked it as a finale. Mm-hmm. But more to the point, it's just a kick ass edit. Like seeing like it, it, it basically is like a 30 minute summary of all of the movies and it is beautiful and, and spectacular and one of the best edits I've seen anyone ever do. So, um, go and check that out. Um, cause it is amazing. Okay. On that note, did you like what you heard here? And if you did, you could check us out everywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, you could check out, uh, all the commentaries that, uh, that Alexa Soto has been doing while, uh, whilst bored out of his brains. Um, oh yeah, man, <laughs> I've been bored. Um, Yeah. You could check me out here. You could check out uh, uh, Alexis Marno whenever she's on on board. Um, yeah, check out Red Spot Entertainment. We're a little bit more frequent now that uh, our schedules have opened up at least a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Without further ado, I'm Kyle Lara, and as always, people stay magical, everyone. <laughs>